In this video, I will discuss one way to model gas behavior using the ideal gas law. To prepare for this video, it will be helpful to watch the video about pressure and its relationship to other key gas variables. The sketches shown here are showing the relationships that we explored in that video, which is that pressure is directly proportional to temperature, directly proportional to the amount of gas, and inversely proportional to the volume. The simplest way to model gas behavior is called the ideal gas model. This model makes several assumptions about how gas particles behave. The first is that gas particles exhibit random constant motion. The second is that they elastically collide with their container and each other. Elastic collisions are collisions in which there's no change in kinetic energy of the particles after, before, and after they collide. You can think about this as the analogy of billiard balls hitting each other and bouncing away from one another. Importantly, pressure arises from collisions with the container wall, which we discussed in a previous video. Gas particles do not exhibit attractive nor repulsive forces. Gas particles occupy negligible volume. And one of the key um, results of the ideal gas model is that the energy of an ideal gas is described only by kinetic energy. This means its energy is directly proportional to its temperature value. Looking back at these relationships between pressure and other key variables, you'll recall that pressure is directly proportional to temperature and amount of gas and inversely proportional to volume. These relationships can be combined as such, shown on the left. It's also necessary to include a proportionality constant R in this expression, which we'll discuss in more detail shortly. This mathematical relationship is referred to the, as the ideal gas equation and is most commonly expressed as PV equals nRT. Pressure times volume is equal to the number of moles times a constant R times temperature. The ideal gas law shows the mathematical relationship between these four variables with the constant R that collectively describe a gas system when modeled using the ideal gas law. While pressure, volume, and temperature can be described using a variety of different units, the units I'm shown, showing in parentheses here are required based on the units chosen for the universal gas constant R. Said another way, if I use this value of R with units of liter times atmosphere over moles times Kelvin, this necessitates reporting the pressure in atmosphere, the volume in liters, the amount of gas in the sample in moles, and the temperature of the gas sample in Kelvin. It's very important that you feel comfortable rearranging the ideal gas equation to solve for variables of interest. Typically, you'll be given information about all variables in the system except one, which you're expected to solve for. If you solve for pressure, you can divide both sides by volume and obtain this expression. Solving for volume, divide both sides by pressure and obtain this expression. Solving for the number of moles, both sides can be divided by RT to obtain this expression. And solving for temperature, both sides can be uh, divided by NR. You don't need to memorize all of these different expressions as they're just rearrangements of this initial equation. As long as you're familiar with this equation, you can solve for any variable that you need. Ideal gas calculations are a really great opportunity for you to make up your own practice problems. Here's one example. What is the volume in liters of a 2.8 mole gas sample under 54 kilopascals, and really that's a pressure unit, at 133 degrees Celsius? I've specified the amount of gas, the pressure, and the temperature. What I want to calculate is the volume in liters. To, let's start by or forming a plan. Here are the steps that I would do to get to what I want based on the given information. 
The first thing that I would do is convert the pressure from kilopascals to pascals to atmospheres. Remember that kilopascals is not, was not included in the initial pressure units that I gave in the video about pressure. Um, so we can, but, but it has a metric prefix, namely that there are a thousand pascals per kilopascal. Then we can use this, this conversion factor from pascals to atmospheres to convert to atmospheres. It's also important to calculate or to convert the temperature from degrees Celsius to Kelvin using this expression. Lastly, I can use these converted pressure temperature values along with the given amount of gas to calculate the volume. Let's do these steps one at a time. If you want to pause the video and try them on your own first, that might be a good idea. So first, converting our pressure unit from kilopascal to atmosphere. This will be a two-step conversion. First, one kilopascal is equal to a thousand pascal. Then the conversion factor given between atmospheres and pascals. The dimensional analysis provides the following result, which is that the pressure in atmospheres is, is equal to 0.53. Next, converting temperature from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. We can do this by simply adding 273.15 to our Celsius temperature for a total or for a Kelvin temperature of 406.15. Then we can put this information together with the amount of moles. Since we're solving for volume, I first rearrange the ideal gas equation to isolate the variable I want to solve for. Then I plugged in the given information, 2.8 moles, our constant R with the correct units, the temperature in Kelvin, and the pressure in atmospheres. The units cancel appropriately here, giving me a value of 176 liters which for two significant figures would be 1.8 times 10 to the second liters. For context, this is about the volume of 100 2 liter bottles of soda. Now it can be difficult to check ideal gas problems um, in terms of does, th does this volume make rational sense? But what you should check with every ideal gas problem that you do is if the units cancel, so moles will cancel with the denominator of moles in the ideal gas constant. Kelvin, same, and atmosphere, since it's in the denominator of this entire expression, will cancel with the numerator here, leaving us with a unit of liters. That's what we would expect. Checking units is so important, I cannot emphasize it enough. So you should now be familiar with the ideal gas law and how to use it to calculate one variable pertaining to a gas system if given information about the other variables. I highly recommend this bonus problem for some extra practice on this concept. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.